Now, a lawyer who acted for WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has arrived back in Australia. Jennifer Robinson was originally stopped when trying to board a flight in London. Ms Robinson spoke with our reporter Jason Om about what happened. Well, when I went to check in at Heathrow, um, the airline staff were unable to check me in at the desk. They had to take my passport and went away to a security officer and then came back and told me that I, that I was inhibited and they had, had to call Australia House before I'd be able to travel. Now, they ended up not having to make that call because my boarding pass was, was printed before they um, actually picked up the phone and made the call. But they informed me that uh, I was inhibited and that they would possibly require the approval of Australia House and a security guard came over and told me that I must have done something controversial to have landed myself on that list. Now, I don't know what the list is. I certainly hope that it's a mistake being a human rights lawyer. You'd like to think that you don't end up on these sorts of lists. But if a list does indeed exist, I'd like to see, I'd like to know what that list is, why I've ended up on it. Um, and certainly, on, in what circumstances is it that an Australian citizen requires the approval of Australia House or the airline staff would, would be required to call Australia House before an Australian citizen can get on a plane and come home? Why would you be on that list, do you think? I have no idea. I mean, I'd like to think it's because of my controversial work about West Papua, but unfortunately that doesn't get the attention it, would, um, it deserves. I suspect if, if there is indeed a list and my name's on it, perhaps it has something to do with my work for WikiLeaks as a legal advisor to Assange and to WikiLeaks. And of course, there's been incidences around the world where those associated in any way with WikiLeaks have been stopped um, in some ways at airports. Um, how, how does it make you feel about possibly being watched in that, in that way? Look, I think if it is happening, um, as the security guard at Heathrow suggested, it is a real concern that human rights lawyers who are doing their job, who are standing up for what I believe, for what is right, um, are under surveillance. And, I mean, it's, it's certainly an issue that I think has come up in Australia recently with ASIO surveillance of activists. And if it's happening to lawyers who are one step removed, what's happening to the activists, to the people that we defend? What kind of answers are you looking now for, from the Australian government and the UK government in regard to this matter? Look, I'd just like to know uh, what happened, in what circumstances and why would an airline be required to call Australia House before an Australian would be permitted to board? Why would airline staff come back from checking with a security guard to say that I was inhibited from travel without calling Australia House? It's just odd. It's never happened to me before. I've certainly never ha heard of it happening before. And I'd like to think it was a mistake, but I'd certainly like to know what happened. Are you worried it'll happen again then? Well, I guess that's why I'd like to know exactly what happened, because I'd like to be guaranteed that my ability to travel is not going to be interfered with and I'm not going to have to deal with these sorts of interferences. The UK Border Agency has told the ABC that no UK border official was involved in the incident. That's, that's all. That, that's all they've, they've said. So who was the um, security guard that told you... Uh, you might be controversial, you might have done something controversial. Uh, that was, there was, uh, it was, I flew Virgin, so it was Virgin airline staff and then a, a GS4 security officer came over to explain. And the airline staff said actually they've had similar problems with an American journalist coming through before. So I don't know whether, I don't know in what circumstances this has happened before. Um, I'm certainly pleased that I was able to travel back. I didn't have any issues with either the Australian border agency here or with the UK border agency. It was an issue initially checking in with the airline. So who actually said you must have done something controversial? Uh, the security guard. And it was the security guard that suggested that if I had been registered as inhibited, that there must be some sort of government listing um, and that I ought to investigate. Because the Department of Foreign Affairs has said they don't know about the list. Uh, look, I don't... It, they're all questions that I have as well. I don't know what the circumstances are. I certainly hope that it was some kind of mistake, but it certainly raises a lot of questions. Now, uh, the, the Attorney General, uh, Attorney General Nicola Roxon is going to be at this conference you, you'll be at. So I know, I actually, will you be speaking to her directly? I need to get going because I would like to make sure I get there in time to, uh, to, to speak with Ms Roxon. Jennifer Robinson there speaking to Jason Om. Uh, arriving at the airport, she will get some FaceTime, you would expect, with the... Uh, the Attorney General today, uh, she's on a list. It would seem so. Sandy Logan from the Department of Immigration responded to Jennifer Robinson's claims via Twitter. He says, while the Department of Immigration and Citizenship cannot speak for ASIO, there's no such nomenclature inhibit list among any Australian agency. And he also wrote, because uh, DAC checked and confirmed no AU agency uh, has such a list, nor had any interest in packs uplift or flights. So uh, 
Yeah, make of that what you will. We'll find out more today. And uh, she's mentioned there, Jennifer Robinson, that uh, she's well known for her work with West Papuans, but more well known. Um, or better known for her work with Julian Assange. Probably really quickly it's um, worth reading out the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade statement that was put out yesterday. It says we are not aware of any Australian government restriction applying to Ms Robinson's travel. As an Australian with a valid passport she would be free to return to Australia at any stage. The UK border authorities or airline of travel may be able to provide further insight on claims that she was impeded from boarding her flight. Let's move on to another story now.